Right, it's the next morning and this has been completely set. So the next thing to do is to, I've forgotten to switch the thing on, never mind. I'll do that now quickly whilst leaving that running. Contravibulations to you on this most comment of days, or in other words, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, I'm glad you could make it. Now, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping. This video should have been out at least six weeks ago, but fate has thrown me a bit of a curveball over the last six or so weeks. Um, just many, many distractions to sort of prevent me from doing this. However, um, it's kind of over, done, and we're back to the grind. Uh, I'm having to shoot some new footage for this purely because, uh, well, I lost a load. My uh, SD card decided to crap out on me, but that's what you get for buying cheap SD cards. Now, what are we going to be doing today? Well, I have an absolute treat and delight for you. It's that. Now, if you don't know what this is, and really you ought to because it's in the title of the video, it is a Teroleptal Mind Control Device prop from the 1982 story The Visitation. Uh, there were actually two versions of this prop. There was a really spangly light-up one that was worn on the wrist and did all sorts of things. And then there was a second version of the prop, which was a kind of dummy version that was worn on a necklace by a character called Richard Mace, as portrayed by the inimitable, if not wooden, uh, Michael Robbins. Now, it's this one that I've decided to make. As you can see, it's got its little, what I would call a strap, but technically speaking, this is called a thong. No giggling in the back there. So it's a really simple prop, it's got its little power cell, if I can get it out, because it's a little bit tight, there you go. All nicely chromed. Um, this thing here is not what I would call a top draw prop, or even a star prop, it's a bit of a shelf filler. Because uh, no one really is going to be taking any notice of it, because it's just not one of those props that people really care about. Uh, I mean I do, because I've built one, so... But anyway, uh, for this sort of thing, I don't care if it's not 100% accurate. I know it's not 100% accurate, but so long as it looks good enough to the untrained eye to not be obviously wrong, that's all that matters. So anyway, we're going to hop over now to the workbench and we're going to look at how I built this thing. For your ocular delectation, have I got a treat for you. A treat of treats. What you see before you is actually a timeline of all the steps it takes pretty much to build one of these. Uh, it begins over here with our scratch-built master. This is made from plastics and other junk. And from that we make a mould. This is the mould for the main body of the piece. It's a simple dump mould where you just pour the libation of your choice into there. This is a two-part mould. It breaks apart like that. And that is for that section there. We then move on to casting into these. And as I said, the libation of choice is a two-part polyurethane resin. That goes into there. So once you've pop those out of the mould, you clean this up and you go on to priming and prepping the surface. So this is what this is all about, this is just primed. From there we hop jollily over to this section. Now this is the first coat, forget this bit, that's not done. We do our first base coating of green paint, uh, that's done with an airbrush. And then we hop to the final straight, it's the final detailing. So as you can see here, this is a little bit of a different colour to that. This has just got a bit of extra airbrushing done with uh, a bit of yellow added into the green. I've flecked paint all over it and obviously added this earlier and the uh, rather amusing thong. And that's pretty much it. So that's how we do it. Anyway, let's get on to more details on that. Okay, before we get into the nitty gritty of how I built this thing, I just want to stress most vehemently that this video or any other video that I may make is not a tutorial on how to do something. I would not be so audacious as to tell you that I am an expert and this is how you must do things. There are plenty of videos out there where they effectively teach you how to do stuff and they say, this is the definitive way on how you do it. Well, I say balls to that. There are many ways to build anything. I just happen to build stuff the way I do because it's based on what I happen to have to hand. Sometimes I have the right stuff, sometimes I don't have the right stuff, and I just dick around until it works. Anyway, Let's get on with this. Uh, this is our master pattern that I will eventually be moulding from. It's made from bits of old scrap styrene, especially for this bit. So I cut out a styrene shape here, a styrene shape there, and I separated it with little triangular fins. 
and then in that I put a load of car body filler to create this sort of organic shape here. Once that was done I used a bit of uh, milliput which is a two-part epoxy putty and I smoothed it all in and then there's lots and lots and lots of sanding and priming and what have you. This here, uh, I don't have a lathe, and if I did have a lathe it would just be a very, very expensive paperweight. I've got nowhere to put it anyway. So this was made out of ABS tubing. A large diameter and a smaller diameter that I just cut up, stuck together, and did the same as what I did here. I just primed it and put a bit of filler onto it. Anyway, from here, it was time to start making a mould. Oh, speaking of mould, before I forget, Let's cut back to me from about a month ago where I decided to get my kids involved in making those said moulds. As I said, it is really simple to do and I thought, well, who better to get involved than my kids, you know? It's that simple. Children can do it. You know, that was the plan before it all kind of went uh, pear-shaped. But anyway, cutting back to me about a month ago. So the first step of moulding this piece is to put it down onto a board and then over that I'm going to place this piece of offcut tube and that is effectively going to act as a wall because we're going to pour in silicon over the top of this. So, yep, first thing to do, a bit of super glue, if I can get the thing open, doesn't look like I can. Ah. There we go. A little bit of glue just on the bottom here. I only need a dab, don't need much at all because what I want to be able to do is break this off later. So, push that down, and that should be on. All right, so that's on. Now the next thing to do is to seal the edges with plasticine. It's just very simply rolled out into a big worm, and put all the way around there. So literally force it in and go all the way around. Right, the tooling mask is now seated to this plastic and you just saw me putting plasticine all around here. Uh, once I pushed it in, I then took this little knife and trimmed all the way around to really neaten it up. And then after that, I dipped this into white spirit and then blended it back in, just like that actually. So next thing to do is to take this and glue it on. Again, this is this is going to be glued on with um, hot glue all the way around there just to stop the silicon from seeping out. So this stops the silicon from seeping out that way and the plasticine down here stops the silicon seeping underneath it. Right, so anyway, what we're going to do now, I've put some wax on there, so this is all ready to go. So what we need to do is start mixing up some silicon. So, Alex, yeah. can you grab hold of cup A? Okay, and just put it on here. Now, Kidoki, can you grab hold of this, which is num which is uh, A as well? Is it heavy? Oh, that's heavy. Right. Okay. Can you open it up? And be very careful. Other way. Okay, this way. That's right. Yeah, do you want me to do it? Okay, there. I'll do it for you. I'll do the hard bit. Right. What I want you to do is that looks is that mucky? Yeah, it's on the outside. So I'm going to switch this on. Uh oh. All right. I uh, just want to reset it, even though it says zero, I want to reset it. Now, what I would like you to do, I'm going to do this by eye. I think if you can take it up to about there, can you yeah. pull that into there? Yeah, I need to let do it really Okay, so... so... Are they both silicon? They're, well, they're both the same silicon. Okay. But one is a part A and the other is a part B. And what you do is you mix them one to one. So if you had a 150 grams of one, you had to have 150 grams of the other, and that would make 300 grams. So yeah, I'm going to just take this to 170. We've probably got more than we actually need here. That's close enough to 170. And there we go. Yeah, we've probably got way too much. Probably. Actually, you what said I want. After the... Yeah, I know, but I've, now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking that's probably a little bit too much. So we're going to see. Okay, let's just pour a bit back in. Okay. Just put that in there. I'm probably off camera, which is fine. How much do you think it weighs right now? Uh, probably about 120. 125. Yeah, that would do. Seven. 
Okay, well that, that, that'll do. So remember 127, okay? 127. My turn. Okay, oh, look, hang on. Yep, here. that's always going to happen. Dunk. Right. Dunky, dunk, 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 dunk. Now, we want the part B, so if you put the part B down there. Now, that's number part B. Should I try and play? Number Aww. big man. And we want 127, so again, it's going to be quite thick and goopy. Okay. So you might need to squeeze it a little bit. Okay, can you help me with this? Wait, can I come over here, please? Sure. Okay. Come over here. Okay. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. I'll do, I'll do the squeezy bit. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Is it so you like... keep watching down there. What do we have to go up to? Uh, 127. I'll tell you when to stop. 127. Exactly. So when we get to about 100, we're going to start slowing down. Okay. Okay. Slower, so now we're going to do it, we're going to do it a little bit slower. You know, I'm not too bothered if it, if it goes slightly oh, oh. over, but we're trying not to go too that's far over. Awesome. Whoops, that's a bit too much. A bit more. 15, 16, 27. Yep. Let that little dollop go, and then we we'll stop. Uh, tell you what, we'll go a little bit more. Little, little, little. Twenty-four. Yeah, there we go. Twenty-five. Just wait for that. Don't worry about it. Okay. No. So what we're going to do now is make the A part red. Now I've got some colour here. I'll show you that. My. Can you see this colour? Now this colour is really, really, really sticky, and it gets everywhere. Um, so I've got to be to watch out. yeah. So I need to be yeah. very careful. What's inside it? It's a pigment. It's like paint. Oh my god, that is like it's like slimy water paint. Yeah. Red. Oh, see, see, see that? Yeah. Mm, so I'm just going to cool. give it a bit of a stir because it looks like it's separated a little bit. But this stuff, if you get it on your hands like I have, it gets everywhere. Daddy, mm -hmm. like, did you use this for your other video? Mm. How many jars have you got of that? Just this bit. Oh. I don't want too much. They reckon about 2%. That's probably way too much. Let's try. There we go. Right, so I'm going to put that into there. Now, I'm going to mix it in. I don't want to add in too much. But you used that for the keyhole thingy. That's right, I did. And then you painted it. Yeah. So I want to mix this in nicely. So you go right up to the edge. See how it's gone right up there. I want to try and get all of this. So see, at the moment, it's easier to mix it before you mix the pair together. Oh, because... so like, Why? Um, is it because... I don't know. <laughs> well, if you mix a pair together, they start going hard. It's called catalyzing. You so that means it's starting to set. Hand. Don't uh, worry about that. Are we going to do um, some of this moulding outside? No, we're all going to do it inside. Oh, because I thought... So do you want to hear the rest of the rest of the, the thing about why we mix it in first? Why? Because yeah. if we mix that into that, it starts to set and go hard. That, okay. That yeah, that. and it takes. Yes. It would take ages to start. Like, yeah, and it might go off. It might go off so before. B, so B to A wouldn't really work. Well, no, it would. It would go thick. You though. just you just need to make sure uh, that you've got it thoroughly mixed up first. Oh. And obviously, you don't really want to add in too much air to it because that will give you loads of bubbles. But in the case of this mold, we don't really. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter that much. What I'm going to do now is this is the boring bit. It takes bloody ages, but what is that? I'm going to add both to this one. Now, ordinarily, I suppose I could just dump that into there, but because it's quite a lot, there's every chance that as I'm mixing it, I won't mix it thoroughly. So if we mix them together, okay, like this, okay, oh, no. don't worry. If we mix them together, come on, out you come. Mine's a bit drippier. Like snake. Okay, so come on. It looks Mix like them together. A looks like a smoothie. Yeah, like. Oh, oh yeah, it looks like one of those smoothies. Or mm -hmm. either like the. Um, what do you call them? The ones with the ice in it. The ice. Yeah, slushy. They, yeah, slushy. Yeah, but slushy. really wet. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just spoon this out. Where is that thing gone? 
So oh, spoon it out. My red, my red one's taking over the white mm -hmm. one. He's like, let's go battle red versus white. White um, red wins because it's coloured. Mm -hmm. And right. scoopy. Mm -hmm. So then try and get as much of this out as possible. Like I said, it doesn't really matter too much if you go a little bit over or a little bit under. It just means that it will either go off quicker or it'll go off slower. So if there's less of one, that means it will go off slower. If there's too much of one, it will go quicker. Probably doesn't make too much sense. Its pot life is about 20 to 40 minutes. Oh shoot, I wasn't watching what I was doing. That's the other thing you should do, is watch what you're doing. Right, okay, so we're kind of, do I say up against it now? Yeah. But this is starting to set. So there, there are some... Hmm? Yeah, I'm going to mix it. I need to, I need to mix it thoroughly. Okay. So the, the, the whole reason I'd move it into a second or third cup is, like you see on there, look, there's there's red stuff. I don't know if you can see it, there's red stuff in there. Yeah. And then there's clear stuff, and I need to make sure that all of that gets together. Okay, so you, you push the stick right into the edge. And mix. Right, so what I'm going to do, listen. I'm going to take a brush. This yeah. is an old brush I can throw away, and I just want to just paint it in and around in here. This is just just as a little uh, coating so we don't trap any air in because that's the one thing we don't want is, is air trapped actually on the mould. So you can brush straight from the pot and then pour on top of it. You don't have to do this, this just, this just helps. It's called a print coat. That looks good enough to me. Do you want to hold that? Is is that like black round round circle so the paint doesn't get slopped onto the? Um, do you mean the paint? Do you mean the paint, or do you mean the, uh, the silicone? Moulding this, things that this thing that you're pouring in right now. That's called the mould wall. Yeah, the mould and mm -hmm. the mould wall and that thingy. Mm -hmm. I guess you need to use that so. So um, the actual mold, um, the red stuff, mm -hmm. is um, so silicon. it doesn't yeah the silicon, so it doesn't go onto the outside and spread on the table. That's right. That's what it's there for. Well done. Because if you do get on there, it might be sticky. Yeah, it'd be an absolute. Table. It'd be an absolute mess. So my guess of three hundred grams was correct. Pretty bang on. So Wait. what I'm going to do now is just scrape the last oh remnants out. And there's not much to do now. We just scrape these last bits out. Now, Movie. if you look at this mould, yeah. you will see that there are bubbles on the top. You need to get rid of them. Well, for this, if we were pressure casting, which means putting... You know what pressure is, don't you? Um, yeah, you know? yeah. Like pushing down. Yeah. Pushing. Now, if we were pressure casting, this would, these, these bubbles would all collapse and distort the mould. But we're not doing that, so it's not, not too bothersome on this particular thing. And um, these bubbles bubbles may actually pop but you can you can just go around and pop them if you like but if I, if I had thought of this through I would have got my airbrush out and just sort of popped them with that. What's an airbrush? An airbrush? Yeah I know what that is. I'm trying to look for what an airbrush No it's the, it's the it's the blowy thing that has paint in it. So Just trying to dislodge any bubbles that are in it. You still got that brush? Yeah, Mana, doesn't it look like an earthquake a bit when it's like, like one? Can yeah. you can you see this is just ever so slightly starting to to gel? It's not one hundred percent yet. It's just starting. So we can we can poke some of these bubbles out if we want. It kind of looks like putty. Like putty, when, like your silly jelly, putty. Like, yeah, or jelly. The one where you put your finger in and it just comes back up again. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So that's what we're doing with that. Leave this until tomorrow and we'll see how it turns out. Right, it's the next morning and this is completely set, so next job is to undo all this. Now I'm going to use a hairdryer just to try and soften up this.
jump. Look at that, just with uh, that plaster seam put in there, there's been the smallest, tiniest little leak, so that's really successful, I'm happy about that. So next thing to do is to try and get this and this separated. So let's have a look, that's looking alright. Now, can I get it out? Oh yes I can. Come on, come on, out you come. Hmm. Look at that, perfect bubble free mould in there. That's really, really good, I'm happy about that. So I just need to clean all this up, I'll use a bit of white spirit for that. And there's the master, all perfectly, perfectly sound. Right, a little bit of white spirit on the rag, and we're going to wipe this stuff away. And the white spirit actually just dissolves the plastiline really easily. So, minimal fuss, minimal effort, and you get a clean mould that's usable straight away. So, yeah, you get the general idea. Look at that, that took seconds. Right, go and wash my hands now, this stinks. Right, as you can see I'm in the process of making a two-part mould and so far I put on the three sides. Uh, what you just saw me doing there was I was Gluing this in as tight as I possibly can, so what you do is you squeeze and push, and that's kind of like welding, a bit. You will notice that there's these blocks here and then all these little holes. Well these are registration keys, and they're there purely to make sure that the two halves of the mould don't move out of alignment, because if they do move out of alignment that's called a misregistration, and that causes really really terrible seams, so this helps to prevent all of that. Uh, you'll also notice I've got three little pieces here. Well, this is a pour spout for the resin to go into, and then these are vents for the air, because obviously if you're pouring into a cavity, that air has to go somewhere, and if it can't go somewhere, it gets trapped within and causes bubbles in the casting. So as I'm pouring my resin in this way, the resin is filling up the cavity and pushing the air out of these. Now, the reason why I've put them in here is because there's going to be a magnet on the bottom, so when I take the casting out, I'll have the little sprues, I'll snap them off, give it a bit of a sand down, and then stick the magnet over that, and that will hide it. So all I have to do now is I've got to add the final wall, and dust it with a bit of wax, and then pour in the silicon. And once that's done, I tip it upside down, take all this stuff out, but not that bit, and then put more silicon in and just continue the process. But anyway, I'm going to crack on with this, and we'll see what happens. Well, it's a few days later now, and as you can see, both moulds are now completed. There's our simple dump mould, all cleaned up and ready to go. And here is our two-part mould. Uh, there's the spout I was telling you about, and there's the two air vents. And if I separate them, you can see how it goes together. So really, these are just all raring to go. I need to put in some resin into these. I need to wax them up first. But yeah, you can see how it locks together. So those those keys and these little dimples here, these basically register the two parts of the mould together and there is absolutely no way that can slip out of alignment. So hopefully that should produce a really good casting. I won't know until I find out, but I'm feeling pretty positive about it. So yep, that's the two moulds, two parts silicon piece and our one piece dump mould. Oh 
okay. Uh, this is quite an interesting stage for me because we're going to be using these moulds for the first time, so whatever we get out of this is going to be a bonus. Uh, it'll tell me, you know, if it goes wrong, it'll tell me why. But hopefully, I'm going to get a really good casting out of both of them, but we shall see. Um, I'm using fast cast here, it's polyurethane. It's, it's mixed in exactly the same way as the silicon was, it's a uh, one to one ratio. Uh, you can probably tell by the state of the bottles, these are quite old, so hopefully the stuff is still okay, but we shall see. I also rather hoped we'd have the kids with me today to do their first casting, but they can do it later. They're off swimming with their grandmother, who's over from Germany. Um, but we'll come to them later, they can do their own castings under my discretion, discretion under my direction a bit later on. Okay, so the first thing to do is prep the moulds. And to do that, I'm just using spray wax. This is to basically release everything. So, give it a good shake. And spray. I have to let that dry now for a while, so I'm going to stop for now and come back to it in about 10 or so minutes. And we're back, actually surprisingly quicker than I thought we would be. Um, it's quite warm today, so everything's drying a lot quicker. Okay, in addition to the wax, I'm going to be using baby powder. Again, that's just to help with the release, but also it helps to prevent air bubbles. A uh, quick dusting of this on there. When you pour the fast cast into it, the powdered mould actually draws the material in by capillary action and helps to effectively burst the moulds. Burst the mould, burst the bubbles in the mould. Anyway, just a little coating. Dust these scuppers, we're under the go. So, do that. Let's get this everywhere. On this first go, the uh, talcum powder also helps to sort of mat down the mould because sometimes the silicon goes a little bit sticky and stays sticky for a while. I mean, you, you can actually uh, put your moulds in the oven and uh, post bake them, as it were, but uh, I really don't want to do that. Because quite frankly, I don't want to put this sort of thing into my oven. You know, that's that's where we cook our food. Next thing is going to be mixing up these, these stuff here. Our fast cast resin. So, again, I'm going to eyeball the quantities. Just reset that. I'm hoping this stuff is still good. Got to really shake this stuff up. If you forget to shake it, it goes a bit peculiar when you cast. I mean, the temperature is good at the moment. I don't think there's much humidity in the air. So how much do I want? Don't know. Let's do it by eye and have a look. Uh, let's do 32. Yeah, screw it. Go to 35 then. Yeah, 33 will do. Yeah, 33 would do. I said, was it 32 or 33? I don't suppose it really matters. Boom, 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 boom. 31. Come on. 32. So this stage where I'm kind of hoping I haven't forgotten something. Oh yeah, there it is. Mix one with the other. Have I forgotten something? Nope, don't think so. Definitely one to one by weight. Now I don't want to introduce any air bubbles into this, so mind you, mixing it like this and the fact it's so liquid, I probably won't get any air bubbles, but we shall see. Just putting in a little bit so I can roll it around. 
this just helps to make sure that I get a good even coating and also helps to decrease any air bubbles getting into it. But I'm quickly learning that with the shape of this mould, i.e. the negative space in here, it's actually difficult to pour uh, to, to move it around. Uh, but so long as I get it right up into those points, there we go. If I had a disposable brush, I suppose I could have brushed this, but I don't. But that's what all this is for. Effectively doing a test run. Now I'm beginning to suspect my table isn't straight. Or level, I should say. And it looks like I may have just enough for, for that. Right, join these together. Right, two bits of wood. Ah, cheap tape. <clears throat> Should we try that one again? Wow, this is really rubbish tape. Okay, third time is the charm. Oh great, it's also not sticky. Goodness for editing. Just out of curiosity, um, I'm going to have a look at this. It's only been a couple of minutes and already this has gone rock solid. This is the pouring material. I think I know what I did. I spent too long trying to put this bloody tape on. So let's open this up and have a look. There's going to be hardly anything in there. You saw how much I managed to put in there. Yoink. So I half expect to see in this a little bit in the pour spout and maybe a bit at the bottom, but let's have a look. There you go. Yeah, I procrastinated way too long putting that tape on. Also it's a bit warm in here. So we can do that again. In fact we can do it again pretty much straight away. Now I'm going to try it again with the funnel. Yeah, much better. What I'm going to do is just roll it around trying to get it all over the place inside that mould. And then pull the wrist in. I'm 
Okay. Miniature disaster. Why do I not have anything ready? So, what's that? That's about 10... I reckon that's about 10 grams I need of each. Let's see how that does. Okay, it's so the moment of truth with these two moulds. I'm going to open up this one first because this one's about 10-15 minutes older than that one. Hopefully I can get it out without taking it out of the jacket. I mean, the original master came out, so let's just press ahead and see what happens. Okay. Come on. Come on. Push. Boink. Well, I think we can safely say that is a success. I mean, come on, it's just a simple mould. But not a single air bubble in it. In here. Or anywhere else for that matter. That is perfect. It's this one that I'm more interested in. Let's put that there. Okay. <clears throat> what am I expecting to see in here? Well, hopefully a decent casting. Uh, a little bit of flash maybe, because I can see it's running here. But let's let's open it up and have a look. Easy does it. Ooh. Okay, that's that's looking good. That looks pretty good to me. So a little bit of flashing as I expected. Doesn't look like anything's moved out of registration. And there doesn't appear... Ah! There is a, there's a huge air bubble right there. Okay. What that means there is that I need to tilt it more. In fact, I can see the entire vent on this side has failed, so I'm going to have to address that on the mould, so I'll probably need to... Oh no, it hasn't failed, it's there, look. So, why has that done that? I probably just didn't slosh it around enough there. But for a first go, that's pretty good. I'm going to have another go and see what happens. But for now, I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to have another go and see what happens. Back to the present, and yes, I did cast up a few more. Uh, six, in fact, until I ran out of resin. Uh, but there just seems to be constant problems with this build. It's not just the build itself, it's actually me. Kids came home the other day uh, with a bit of a sniffly nose. A few days later, I'm like death warmed up. However, it does give me the opportunity to do my best David Banks impression. Give me the bow. Anyway, ah, my voice. So, what have we got here? So yeah, this is one of the final castings. Uh, came up pretty well, and as you can see, I managed to sort out the issue with the bubbles, it was just tipping it over. Uh, as an aside to this, I'm, you heard me say that I was going to put a magnet on the bottom, well actually I've decided not to do that. After I've flat sanded the bottom just to get rid of uh, these little bubbles here, these surface bubbles, you may just be able to see them, and round it off the corners and what have you, the build up of paint on this, which is very, you know, it's microscopic to be honest, but it's enough just to put a bit of grip in here. So, out goes the magnet, on goes the paint, so what I have to do now, as I said, is just give it a bit of a flat sand here, round off these edges here, and uh, clean up these seams, and use a little flat file in here, and just take that out, and then it's a case of spraying them grey, and then getting on with the airbrushing. Oh, the bloody builders! Just constant noise, if it's not noise, it's dust, and if it's not the dust, it's the building debris in my garden.
just before I start, I want to say, in the interest of timekeeping, uh, as I said, we've already skipped ahead to this being already primed, but I'm also not going to show the chroming process on that. A couple of reasons. A, we're running out of time, but B, I wouldn't mind doing an actual video based on chroming and the different chroming techniques. So for now, that is not going to be covered. We're just going to do this. So, got my, uh, my green ready, and I've got my thinner ready, and I'm now going to use this airbrush. This is a dual action airbrush. It's siphon fed, no, it's not siphon fed, it's gravity fed. So all your paint goes into there, which you will thin down. Push down for air and back for paint. So. See how noisy this is? Very quiet indeed. I'm sure there are experts out there screaming at how bad my painting is, but don't care. Broad strokes first. Doesn't seem to be working. Either. Right, that's the edges done. Now I just want to do a little bit across the bottom and the top. So a little bit around the bottom. Right. I'm just going to splatter some, well, basically some of this onto there. Just a little bit. You possibly can't see it on camera. But it's definitely there. Just to give a little bit of interest. Don't go too much. I want large splatters and small splatters. So harder ones and harder flicks and not so hard flicks. Flip the thing over and do the same there. And that is about it. Okay, welcome to the end of the line. Uh, the perceptive amongst you will notice that while I was airbrushing, I had a bit of a problem. When I say bit, I mean a huge problem. Um, the trigger, as I was pressing it down and letting go, it was still depressed. It was still in the down position and therefore shooting out loads of air and loads of paint and effectively made it uncontrollable, which is why the application of paint didn't look as great as it could have done. Um, I should have stopped, but I had to carry on. Problem is, as you press this trigger down, the other end of it goes through a little gasket, and for some reason, that gasket had shrunk and just was grabbing hold of the 
uh, the trigger end, and it was just going on and on and on. So I'm going to leave it in. I'm not going to re reshoot all that. I just haven't got the time. I'm I've, I've running out of paint as well. So in the interests of uh, ballsing things up and proving that I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to airbrushing because I'm really new to it, I'm going to leave it in. So airbrushing was done. Uh, I flexed the paint on and now it's going over and doing that little thong piece. And for that I'm going to use a traditional brush because at least then I know what I'm doing. Okay, the final job here now is just to do a little bit of weathering to this thong and to carry this job out I'm just going to wet it down with a bit of tap water and some black and some brown but before that I need to damp the thing down to allow the paint to soak in. So yeah, let's get on with that then. Just some water. Actually, I suppose what I could do dunk it in the water. There we go. Now it is a bit warm in here, so let's just get on with it. Lots of water and lots of paint. Don't need to mix them particularly well, but let's let's start. It doesn't have to be done in any particular fashion, just as long as it's a little bit random. There we go. And I just want to add in a little bit of wear and tear to this. just from years of wearing the thing. So we can use your fingers. Add in more paint and more water. It's a really messy job this. But someone's got to do it. So we'll let the darker shades sit in first and then we'll come in and add in some of the lighter tones. Now, we've added in some dark shades and now we want to just add in, or I want to add in just a few lighter tones. So that's three different shades we've got. It just helps to break up the monotony. So I'm going to just dab it on here and there. Same way. <coughs> Doesn't have to be done particularly well, just just so it's in there. And that helps to make things pop somewhat. And then we'll come back and do a bit of a dry brush as well. Don't want to go over everything we've already done, but just something to break it up. And it gives a third tonal value. Going with a bit neater stuff. Just almost dry brushing it. But always smush it back in again. So this could be dirt and grime and what have you. key to it is to remember to turn it over and do the other side. And bear in mind this may dry a little bit lighter, but so long as it's worked in, that's all that really matters. And all we're trying to do here is just give it the idea that this thing's been worn on a regular basis.
So we're coming up on 52 minutes of this video, and that's already 23 minutes shorter than the K9 video that I did last time. So already I'm sort of managing my time a little better. I could have made this a bit shorter, but, you know, I didn't. But anyway, the finished prop, the Terraleptal Mind Control device. If this video has any worth, it's this. It's to prove that even on the most simple projects, things can and will go wrong, no matter how well versed you are in making things. You know, we've often seen videos of people on YouTube making their projects and everything goes perfectly well. It runs smoothly, everything goes according to plan. But remember, for the most part, the failures are often edited out. So if you're working on a project at your house or at your garage or wherever it is you work, and all around you things are falling apart, not gluing together, just totally going wrong or on fire, and you're looking at stuff on YouTube and thinking, well, how do they do it so well? How come theirs is so perfect? Believe me, they're not showing you it. So in this video, I just wanted to show how even simple things can have their problems. With this, it was the airbrushing. It was All it was was one simple little tiny O-ring that jammed my airbrush in the open position so I was not getting the results I wanted. The technique was absolutely fine, it was the results I was getting. And look, here they are. These are the two that you saw me airbrushing. So okay, it's just paint. All I have to do is strip it down, which you can see I've started to do here, and I can do it again. Now I've overcome the problem with the airbrush. It's just a simple matter of getting back into it and starting again. So the takeaway from this is that you will have problems. And what you need to do is just problem solve. Find out what's going wrong, take a step back. In all the stress, just take a step back, go and have a drink, do whatever it is you need to, and then come back to it with a fresh eye and problem solve and keep trying and trying again. And eventually you'll overcome your problems and everything will go according to plan and you'll get a result that you're looking for. So, thanks for watching.